Make It Run Again comes back with the fourth episode. Steve Darnell and Merlin Johnson have a new challenge. Take a trip down to Mexico and salvage this 1968 GMC short bed. Cross on the wall, drive across wild mountain roads, and come back to Vegas in one piece. Hmm, I'd say that's enough to call it a win. Now let's roll the dice and see if we can make it run again. I got a pair of pliers. Okay, let's just see what we got in our pocket because this is going to determine whether we're going to make it or not. Now this Crescent Ranch would technically extend this oh, Crescent yeah. Ranch, right? See, we could freaking pry. We got and a then cheater bar. You got a tape measure. I got a tape. I got I a always, knife. I, always have tape. I got a knife, but I broke a blade the other day. I busted a blade. We got I got a one blade knife. And you got your screwdriver. And my screwdriver. Okay, so, so look, we, we got a toolbox. I mean, as long as we're not taking lug nuts. We're gonna be good. Dude, it's an old Chevy. How hard can it be to fix? Bubble gum and baling wire, the thing will run. Yeah. So look guys, we are getting ready to start our fourth episode of Make It Run Again. Um, it's six o'clock in Las Vegas. Yeah. I, know that, I know that sun looks like it's high, but it's not. It's barely up. It's, yeah, it's And we've still gotta go clear to San Diego. And look at this piece of junk that you're trying to make a deal on. So Joe from DT Auto is actually gonna, um... okay, let me explain Joe and Steve. <laughs> okay, these are two guys, probably in their 60s, that got more money than cents, okay? They have a Chevy short box down in San Diego that's on their trailer that they need to get off their trailer because they have bought a Camaro or something different. They got a better deal. They got a better deal. So he had called me and asked me if I want the Chevy short box. I mean, DT Auto, let me tell you, they have really nice cars in their showroom, but when it comes to me, he knows I'm cheap and I want something cheap, so we never know for sure what kind of shape this thing's gonna be. Yeah, we don't exactly get the turnkey ready trucks. <laughs> yeah. somewhere. I don't know where those guys are. Yeah, where are they, man? They're probably down fishing or something. Interviewing the fire guys there, so you sure you don't want to go to SeaWorld? He said something about catching crabs here or something. <laughs> he caught crabs here when he was uh, from a girlfriend, I thought. He said he used to go catching crabs with her. Alright, guys. Here we are in San Diego, California. So nice. And our buddy Thank Joe you. is just now showing up with our short box Chevy. Me and Merlin have been standing out here in the, enjoying the weather. Dude, it is like probably 80 degrees, not even 80. I'll bet it's 75, it's degrees, 75 here. degrees here. It is so nice, but probably not as nice as this little short box Chevy truck. Woo! What's up, guys? Hell yeah. Yeah. Look at that green pup. There she is. Let's get it off the trailer. Yeah, what's the hurry to get rid of it? It's a nice <laughs> truck. Man, that is nice. It looks good. The body's all there, but all I heard is the price go they down. They said it ran when they parked it. That's all. <laughs> they, all they all say that. That's what they all say. I just told you, but I'm not sure you guys want this or not. <laughs> You're not sure if we want it or not. What's up, man? What's up, brother? So, what are you guys doing? Dumping junk for better junk? Yeah, no, no. This stuff. is yeah, you are. this is not junk. Man. This is what Travis told me. He said, my dad wants to get rid of this truck because it doesn't have a key. They don't know if it runs. They can't get it to start and move. And that you guys found something else down here you want that's more desirable than this. I don't know why I even have him answer the phone anymore. I'm not going to let him talk to you guys anymore. All right. So why didn't you, you just to... drive it home? Because I have a new truck. So what's the story on it? Uh, Tell us C10, the story. C10, it's guy had it, wanted to get rid of it. His kid had worked on it. Looks like he's got a tilt column in it. That's cool. He's done a few things to it. Travis kind of told me the deal on it, that somebody had this truck and they got started on it. They put an LS in it, um, 4L60 automatic, um, and then kind of gave up on it and didn't finish it or something like that. Is that what? 
really what's going on? Find the key. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so you brought us a truck with no key. They, well, well, there's more surprises under You're the going thing. in. You'll, it's have, it's You'll have to pop. You'll have to So we got no keys. We right? Might need a battery. Might need a battery. Battery. There's no battery. <laughs> Is there gas in it? We don't Let's know. Let's even know if there's gas. Because <laughs> we're in a we're in San Diego in a in a parking lot. Like there's no auto parts around here. It know, ran, but it if ran when they parked homeless, it. It ran when the they place. parked it. It ran when they parked it here. Yep. That's always the famous one. last words. <laughs> ran when we Let's parked it. it out. Let's look at this thing real quick. Yeah, this Just was a, a little sticky. So this was a GMC, but now it's got the '67 front clip. Yeah, it's a nice little cute little 5.3 in it. It's a pretty clean truck, dude. Actually, isn't bad. I'm surprised I mean, this DT Auto is not keeping this one. Yeah, why are you getting rid of this? Why? Well, why? Because I've got a brand new '72 that the guy's willing to give us for a really good price, and you can't steal in slow motion, so I have to go pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's a scam. Ninety percent of these are a scam anyway. We'll know in a couple hours if this one was a scam or not. Yeah, really. <laughs> Did you bring cash? <laughs> We got some Detroit wheels for it that we're gonna put on it. We got Falcon to put some tires on it. I already painted the rims and patinaed them. I seen pictures of the truck and I could tell there's a little white in the hood up there up on the roof. So we're gonna try to wet sand that out at some point. So Merlin's buddy lives in Mexicali and I shipped the rims and tires to him. We also are gonna try to get some upholstery done whether it's in Tijuana or over in Mexicali. We don't know yet. Oh, these are yeah, good. I'm not real sure about these hard, dry rotted. Oh, dude. If you keep it under 55, you're probably good. You know, this truck would be nice to drive around tonight if we can get it running with the windows down while we don't have no air. I know, because when we head south, woo, Ooh, it's going to be that hot desert. when we head home. Ooh, the shifter's a little funny. Mm. I wonder if I can tighten that up. Ooh. Oh, we got to have that little wash. Is that ice cream and yeah. popcorn? What are we doing? <laughs> Why wave that dude over here, Chaka? Oh, Merlin must be really excited because while I'm dealing with the ice cream guy, trying to get everybody some ice cream, he shoves this thing off the trailer and he's like, come on, let's get this baby running. We got a long ways to go. Thank Gracias, you. senor. Thank you. All right, so we're sitting here eating ice cream on the beach. We got our little short box unloaded. We haven't got it started yet because we're taking a break right now. This is a big break time, right? When that little cart comes by with the bell ringing, there's nothing better. We had to we had to go chase this guy down and get some ice cream. So it looks pretty complete. It doesn't look bad. I mean, what do you do here? Like, it doesn't look bad. Well, when you start plugging electricity in, that's when you know what you do. <laughs> doesn't want to run. <laughs> We've got us a little jump box here. I think Steve's gonna. Or I mean. I got I got power hooked up. Can you jump start this? What do you got? What do you got? I don't know. I didn't even look at it. What do we got going on? <laughs> what do we got? Does the wires look burned up in this thing? Wires I don't know. There's a whole bunch of them hanging under Something's the dash. Something's unplugged right here. I'm just letting you know. Need a battery. It's too dead. You out of here? Have yep. fun. I'm sure Wish we'll us run. luck. Yeah. I hope it people. runs. So how far are you guys getting away from here? Uh, uh, I mean, are you guys in San Diego, it, so. right? Yeah, we're gonna see if we we'll can. We'll go look at it. We'll if probably it, stay here. If it doesn't work, I mean, we'll stay here tonight. We'll go to dinner. Yeah. All right. So. All right. All right. Let's go buy another truck. It's three twenty. Maybe do some dinner later. Hey, Steve, it's got like a New Mexico plate on it. What are we gonna oh, do about you know that? What? We need a plate. We need a plate. Joe. Hey. Oh, now what do they want? Hold on. <laughs> what the heck, man? You forget something? Don't we have like a like a permit to drive it? Yeah, we're gonna need we're gonna need all of the above. Since you're using my plate for free. Okay. But if you're arrested in Mexico, I have to report it stolen. I'm gonna be like, <laughs> hey, call Tiziana. <laughs> Should we just leave that one on there? Hope and a prayer. I Hope mean it was prayer. 17. I think it's just got one screw in it. Ooh. Where you been, Chaka? What are you doing? Making movies? What takes you so long? What'd you do? Stop and get donuts and stuff? Damn. Oh, look at that. We got a battery. Hey, man. 
By the time we're done with this, we're going to wish we'd have went with Joe. Missing some bolts. So looking at the truck a little bit closer, it looks like it was probably built in a driveway by a couple of guys headed for Holly LS Fest in Las Vegas. But they did a pretty fair job. They used quality parts and they put a good engine in. LS, LS Fest. Fest. They were dreaming big. Yeah, they were. They're like, we're going to LS Fest this year. Let's take this Chevy. <laughs> Doesn't run. <laughs> So the project looks like they got off to a really good start, but they just did not finish. I don't even know if they got it running. The chrome was not burnt on the headers before we started it. So I don't even think they ever had it running. However, they didn't upgrade the brake system. The brakes are drum brakes all the way around. There's no power booster. So this thing's got like 1968 brakes and a 2020 engine. Fucking truck's like a brand new. If it had power brakes, yeah. Okay, so we're down really close to Belmont Park on the beach, and we got this little short box pickup truck, and I know where there's a great place to pull off and do a little photo shoot, and I'm thinking, if we're this close, let's do a cool photo shoot, we'll get maybe the roller coaster in the background at Belmont Park, and maybe some of the surf shops that are there, and let's just go hang out for a minute. Love this place. Let's go to the beach. Let's check Let's it go out. Let's put our feet in the water. Oh yeah. <sighs> so nice right here. There are some days when I'm sitting in my shop and it's 110 degrees in here, and I'm thinking, I would almost get in my truck right now and drive all the way to San Diego just to walk down to the beach to put my feet in the water for 10 minutes and come back. That's how much I love it. So I'm like, hey, I'm already here. I'm taking my boots off and I'm gonna walk down and put my feet in this cold ocean and breathe that fresh air that comes off the ocean. I love it. All right, well, got our feet in the water. That felt good, actually. That was, that was kind of cool. This, to drive all the way down here awesome. and go to the beach. So I thought, you know what, this little pickup truck's running so good. Let's cruise Pacific Coast Highway and let's just drive around and enjoy it for a while. Okay, we ready to go to Mexico? Let's do it. heading down into Mexico and um, now things are going to change. So my production guy that does all the filming and editing cannot get across the border. I'm all going right. to grab you here. How you guys, how you leave. Good luck guys. All all right. Right. I'll see We're you in a little bit. We're going into Mexico. Don't turn it back now. Don't turn it back now. These cameras, they're like checking you out. Ooh, take your picture. Oh, this took your picture. Like, look. Sorry guys, I'm not going to Mexico with you. See you in Calexico. Have fun. We are at the international border in Mexico and we are going to get a margarita and a taco. So our videographer, Chris, he's not able to travel to Mexico and there's a lot of work in the U.S. that he needs to do for us to get ready to go back to Vegas. So when crossing the border, we're going to meet a new videographer team. We don't know who these guys are. Chris set them up. We don't even know if they speak English. He said they do, but he doesn't speak very good English. But when we cross the border, we come down the little ramp and it's like three lanes wide. It's really confusing. All the signs are all of a sudden in Spanish. 
we can't read anything, can't understand anything, and these guys wave us over. So we pull over to stop. We don't know if we're gonna get robbed or if they're actually people we're meeting. And we get out and they've disabled their car in a no parking zone, waiting for us to cross the border to meet them. And I told Steve, I said, dude, this is what we would do. I don't think I stopped at one red light, not one. I didn't stop at a stop sign, I didn't stop. I don't even know what alto means at this point because they say alto and no one's stopping. So <laughs> I just kept going the whole time. It was great. Me and Merlin cruised through Tijuana and I love it. I think somebody took a caca right there. See the cacas? It They're smells cacas. like it. don't even care. There's just nobody yeah, we just stopping. Gotta, we just, just gotta run it You too. step out there, you get ran over. Yeah, you gotta run it. Okay, so walking around Tijuana and looking at all the cool stuff. I love the little stores. I come across this Joker mask and it's perfect for my Joker car. So I had to have it. You know, like if I go to a swap meet, I'm a pretty good negotiator here in America. But once I go across the border, my Spanish is poquito, so I don't do so well, you know what I mean? And, you know, I know these people are hustling and trying to make some money, and I'm only gonna be there for a little bit anyway. I might have got hustled a little too much, but it didn't bother me that bad, because I know these people are trying to feed their family. One. Four, four for 10. Four, 10, 20, 30, 40. And we're not done. We got one of these. We want to get some of these too. These guys are hustling Steve, like trying to sell him sombreros and sell him face masks and sell him all these things. And they're trying to get top dollar. And Steve is a terrible negotiator. I'm going to flip you. If you win, 15 a piece. If I win, 20. You win either way. You're still winning. Okay, let's, let's, <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, let's split it, let's split it, let's make, you say 30, I say 40, give us 35. Uno bandido, uno switchblade, dos sombreros, put that on a receipt book. I need a big piñata. need a big piñata. So heading out of there, we're on our way to a little town called Takati. And once we get past Takati, there is a mountain pass in there, and don't quote me on this, but I think what they call it is La Romosa. And I could be saying it wrong, but let me tell you, this is Pike's Peak of Mexico. Another truck rolled over down there. Isla Ramosa is a rough mountain. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> These truck drivers that drive that mountain pass are freaking crazy. They head down that thing at 50, 60 miles an hour. They're pulling double trailers. They're overloaded. It's straight off. They run them off the cliffs. They run them into the walls. They run, it is crazy. <laughs> Once we got to Mexicali, we got yeah. with Kelvy, and I said, look, this is what I need. I need a guy that can do some carpet, a seat, and maybe a couple other little things. Do you have people? Kelvy got on the phone, started calling everybody, and immediately these people show up. Like, no, hey, I can't do it this week. No, I'm too busy. None of that. They showed up, and they were ready to work. We, we pulled the seat out of the truck and cleaned the interior out to prepare for one of Kelvy's friends to come over and do the carpet in the truck. We got some new wheels and tires going on it. We're gonna wet sand and buff it, get the interior done. And if you don't bid on this little short box truck, because we just drove it through the desert at 108 degrees with cracked tires, 
and it got 22 miles to the gallon. 22. So, better get bidden. This thing's a badass little truck. If not, I'm gonna buy it myself. So after we finish up at Kelvy's shop, he has reservations at a special restaurant in town and they treat him like a king there. He knows everybody because he grew up there. And they have a big table for all of us. And we go there with his whole family and we have tacos. And it was a fabulous time. Okay, day three of Make It Run Again. We're here at our buddy Kelby's shop and um, we're wet sanding the truck today, finding all kinds of cool stuff. So we started early this morning. We're wet sanding it right now. We're gonna try to get it where we can actually buff this thing and make it look right. Um, it's always a long process, but when you wet sand them, you start finding all kinds of cool stuff under the truck. The tailgate's starting to look really good. And then we found out that the hood was gold, but if we wet sand it down, there's black primer under it so it'll actually start matching the rest of the truck. So this is gonna turn out pretty good. Are you ready for some Mexico water? Are you gonna drink some? I had some this morning. Kelby's dad gave me a glass of Mexicali water. How was it? He said, drink this water. It was good. And then he told me it's straight out of the Colorado River. He got it by the lighthouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Remember, the front, the front clip on this was a 68 GMC. We're, we've, somebody had put it at a 67 Chevrolet. So the difference is, usually on the GM hoods, they're a little flatter right here in the front this year. And uh, this is a whole different kind of a hood. So 67, 68 have their own style of hood. And then in 70 to 72, they have their own style of hood. The 67 and 68 is kind of the cool one that everybody wants. So a lot of guys find a wrecked truck, they'll pull the front clip off it and put it on their 71, 72. Um, the GMCs are kind of, a, I mean, they, they look good. I really like the Chevy grill better than the GMC. So it was kind of cool that somebody already started this process. But this hood, you know, you got to find parts and pieces everywhere. And um, this hood right here was probably off a gold truck at some point. And they just found it and stuck it on it. Well, I'll tell you what let's do. Hide that 220 so nobody sees it. Take yeah. take one sheet, yeah. get a bucket, and I want you to go around the bottom of it yeah. like a Tasmanian devil. But don't hit the edges because it'll sand wet. through to metal. I want it wet as with a bucket from the edge down. Right. I want you to 220 the out of that. Right. Then we're going to come back around it with some of this wore out 400. Yeah. Then we're going to 2000 this whole truck. Exactly. But we're going to start these other guys on 2000 on the top. Yeah. of this town should have been uh, Muy Caliente. Cantaloupe, Agua Fresca. Yeah, we got some cantaloupe, like fresh, right off the road. So they just drove in on their bike. This little sweet little three-wheeler. I come here be because in Masai Fall, I saw the history and Instagram of Mr. Steve, and I come to this shop in my city with Kelvin. Kelvin is, is the owner of this shop as friend of Mr. Steve. Hey, this is my truck, this is my folk truck. It's 98. I bought maybe five years ago. I love. I love the port, but I spread in the history on the TV show of Steve Walder Up. 
Luke, come. The angel is 360 line is the best angel of the world because it's for is made in Michigan. Biggest thing? Come on, Chaka. This guy shows up to do the upholstery or do the carpet kit in it, and he doesn't let up. I mean, this guy's probably got to be 60 years old. He crawled in this truck and, I mean, went to work. Never said a word. I didn't even talk to him until the end of the day. Didn't even say nothing to me. He just went in and I kind of watched him to see if he's got the lines are perfect in the carpet. He hand put, laid it in there. He hand cut it all and it looks perfect. You know, if you're watching this right now and you're 15 years old, that's what work ethic is. That's the way you should be working. Video games and vaping and just hanging out with your friends all day is not getting nothing done. These kids are workers. They come from a work ethic background and that's why they come to America and take your job is because they're willing to work. Okay, so in the middle of this whole truck build, I mean, this is like another little small episode of Vegas Rat Rods. I mean, you got one guy doing the, the upholstery work on the carpet, another guy buffing the truck out, another guy doing the tint on the windows, and me and Merlin just running around this truck just making sure everything's tight on it. I mean, it's a train wreck, but it's so much fun. Now it's time to get the stickers on this thing, sticker it up with all our great sponsors that really help us out along the way. And so now it's time to put the sponsors on and finish this thing up and go eat some tacos. So we get it on the dyno and Kelvy makes a pull on the dyno and it makes good horsepower, somewhere around 225. And then he starts telling me how it's running lean, it's doing all these different weird things. And then he looks at me and he says, did you put Mexican gas in this truck? And I'm like, dude, we're in Mexico. Where are we supposed to get our gas? And he starts laughing. So the Mexico gas compromised our dyno tune a little bit, but it still ran pretty good. The uh, pretty much the, the facelift all day today with Kelvin and his crew. Thank you. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. A lot of work, man. Yeah, it was fun. We are now gonna go eat some tacos. So it's D Day. It's time to head from Mexicali all the way back to Las Vegas to see if this truck will actually make it. in the line for two hours. It was getting hot. We don't have air. But let me tell you something. This little badass pickup truck right here idled in that traffic, hot, 
for two hours and never got hot. Steve and I have been sweating in this hot black truck and we're just about to cross the border into Calexico. Look like they are going to cross the line from Mexico right now, in like probably in a minute. I'm still here in California. So we get our paperwork, we cross the border, we meet our camera guy, Chris, he's happy to see us. We got places to go and things to do. We made it all the way from San Diego, Tijuana, through some treacherous, I mean, crazy mountain range. In Rolled the over of trucks, cars in the ditch, people off the ledge, 110 degrees. Oh, it was hot. It was hot. But you know what? We made it all the way to Mexicali. We tuned the truck. We put wheels, tires on it. We buffed it out. We got the interior we done. We got all the interior done like we said we were going to do. It's nice. Kelvy helped us out with all his people and friends and family that live in Mexicali. It was great. I had, a, I had an awesome time. We're going we're gonna to try to see some really cool stuff on some back roads, so ride along. Check this out. So Steve and I have been talking about the route back to Vegas. We can go and get on the interstate and we can go home, but that's not cool. That's not fun. There's some things that we both want to go see. And the first one on our list is Slab City. I've heard a lot about this place. I've seen a couple pictures, and we want to go check these characters out. Yeah, let's make it run. Somebody stole the rear end. It's a piece of art. Money glued on it. There's pennies. Dude, hills have eyes. You get back on some of these dirt roads where all these guys are just, these people are just building houses in, in the middle of nowhere, okay? It's hot, there's no water, there's no power. They're in the middle of the desert, they're in the bushes, they're everywhere. And we were driving the little pickup truck through there and I'm just thinking to myself, I feel like I'm being watched when you can't see nobody. It's got pennies all the way up the top, all the way around the door. This is insane. Uh, pulled around the corner uh, we ran up on this place they called the Salvation Mountain and it is so colorful and crazy once we got up close to it I realized that they they build a lot of this out of stacked bales of straw and which is kind of a good idea because insulation wise it's really nice in those those uh, caves in there but uh, you could tell that it was done a while ago and parts of it are kind of falling apart um, but <laughs> I was just amazed by the amount of paint and where they got the paint to paint this whole mountain. Like, there is a lot of paint. Damn, crazy. Just keep painting the sand. This is, you gotta get up here. So we're inside this little room and it says Jesus and God and all this stuff. And I'm like, we gotta take a moment and actually meditate and pray. Om. It's disgusting. Yeah. I decided, hey, let's go see the salt in the sea and check it out. Because I've heard lots of things about this place. It's called Bombay Beach. And I don't know if you've ever looked it up or checked it out, but it's a huge lake full of salt that has nothing in it. I want to go swing on that swing. I don't. Oh, oh, dude, <laughs> I don't want to get in my truck. <laughs> thing's huge. How many square miles did you say it was, Merlin? 8,300 square mile. Of waste. Of. So, I guess they were 
feeding this with an aqueduct uh, around the early 1900s and somewhere around the 1930s, like 31, 30, 31, they had a big flood on the Colorado River and it backflowed. But the Colorado River is all the way on the other side of those mountains. Mm -hmm. But it backflowed into here and overfilled this thing. And it would have dried up, but the farmers have continued to feed it. And during the 30s to the 40s, they thought, well, that's great, we got a new lake. So California developed it and put all these little cities around it, put launch ramps in, and they used it for a little while, but then the, the, the water started to get really brine-like and salty-like, and it killed all the fish, and it just went really nasty. Yeah. And now nobody really comes out here to use the water. That banana airplane, or whatever it was, with the mushroom at the top, there was a ton of fabrication work that went into that to make it work. The airplane in the guy's front yard, come on guys, that is a ton of work. It's not for everybody, and neither are my cars that I build for people. But I do have the respect for the guy that actually put that work in to make that. It blew me away. When I pulled up, I had to sit there and stare at it and go, what the hell? Why would you do that? There's no reason for it. It's just how much desire do you have and how much work ethic do you have to really make it happen? That's what it comes down to. Well, looky here. All right. It's 110. We're at Roy's right now, which is this little abandoned motel that sits right on Route 66 that, you know, doesn't hardly exist anymore, but there's some people out here that are restoring it and making it look cool. We're gonna get the hell out of here. We're gonna see you in Vegas here in two hours to reveal this truck somewhere cool. So we're gonna see you there. You know, one of the advantages I have from being born here in Las Vegas is knowing a lot of people. And you gotta know some showgirls. If you don't know showgirls, then you're nobody. So pulling into town, I called up a couple of girls that I knew and I said, hey, jump in the back of the truck, let's cruise the strip and let's finish this episode off with a lot of Vegas flavor. <laughs> So bad. Limano a Las Vegas, right? Ligamos. Ligamos, okay. Okay, look, I know our Spanish isn't the best, but we did make it to Las Vegas. It's great to celebrate it down here on the Las Vegas Strip. And look, this truck's still gonna be on bid for another three days, so whoever is not bidding on this truck should be. This is a great little truck. It made it all the way through Mexico, all the way up through Nevada to Las Vegas. Didn't miss a beat, it ran great, it made 22 miles to the gallon. Perfect truck, somebody needs to own this thing. Okay, first of all, I would like to thank our sponsor, DT Auto Brokers. Travis and Joe over there have been so good to us. They usually locate these trucks for us and find them, whatever it is. Um, so I wanna say thank you for doing that for us. It makes it life a lot easier. And usually these guys already go through them and they know what they look like. And we wanna have something that is runnable. We don't wanna rebuild a whole motor sitting in the parking lot unless we have to. So thank you for finding us these cool trucks. I'd like to thank Almond Auctions for putting this auction together. Um, they do such a great job of putting in the avenues that it needs to be in for people to actually see the truck and bid on it. So I wanna say thank you to Almond Auctions for holding this auction. It makes it easy for me and everybody else. I would like to also thank Southern Kentucky Classic for sending us out all the parts for these 
style of pickup trucks. Now, if you remember, we did a 68 GMC the first episode, then we did a 66 Chevy the second episode, then we did a 73 the third episode. Now this is the fourth episode with Southern Kentucky Classics shipping us parts, the little pieces that we need for every bit of those trucks that we had. So these guys will have everything you need if you ever need anything. And one of our new sponsors that's been really nice is Schaefer's Oil. And um, we have ran Schaefer's Oil through the truck. We have all the spray. We used a bunch of it. We actually uh, coated the whole inside of the bed with the uh, Schaefer's Oil spray, which was really nice. And you know, on these old trucks, you know, the levers, trying to get them all to work when we get up to the place, usually they haven't been touched in a while. So we like to lube them all up. And we want to thank Schaefer's Oil for giving us all that product. I would like to also thank Falcon Tires. They're great. These guys are awesome. We cannot make it without fresh tires. We came across that desert. It was 115 degrees on some old dry rotten tires. We'd still be out there broke down or dead somewhere. So thank you Falcon Tires for giving us a good set of tires to roll across the desert and make it back to Vegas. Also, I'd like to thank Tuned by Kelvy that actually tuned the truck. And we'd love to thank HB Tuners for actually sending us out some credits so we could actually tune this little truck and make it run right. So I'd like to say thanks to Kelvy and HP Tuner for making it happen. I also would like to thank myself, Steve Darnell at Welder Up for putting up with myself and Merlin. And I also would like to thank Welder 101, which is our welding beginning course to help support us get through this also. I would also like to thank Industrial Injection, boom, for their support on helping us make this episode work. Also, maybe in the pipeline, Industrial injection has something to do with diesels. I'm thinking maybe a diesel truck.